Both teams going through their pregame rituals, getting loose well before we're underway. Greetings, everyone. 2K Sports brings you the NBA. This is Kevin Hall. I'm joined by Clark Kellogg and Steve Kerr as we get set to bring you all the action. The starting fives for our game. Here are tonight's starting lineups. First for the Nets, Jerry Williams and Joe Johnson at the one and two. And inside out of Stanford University, a skill post score with tremendous eyes, the seventh player at Fort Lopez. Then it's Pierce, and it's Garnett, and it's the four shot. And for the Celtics, the speedy backboard of Rondo and Bradley. And it's Kelly Olenek out of Gonzaga, a seven-footer with inside-outside offensive skills in the Midwood Center. What a tremendous talent. Getting ready for his first NBA appearance. And there's Green, and it's Bass with the power goal. You know, as great as 2012 was for the Nets, in many ways, they really came up short on their last game of that calendar year. In 2012, the New Year's Eve matchup against the Spurs, the Nets only scored five points in the third quarter of that contest. off the tip. Rondo against Williams. Rondo pitch to Bradley. Back to Rondo. Six to shoot. Right side Rondo. And the shot counts. He's fouled and it's a chance for a three-point play. And Clark, you were talking about the Nets. They went from looking like a team that could compete for a title to a team that, while still talented, Steve, and a lot for the playoffs, was a little closer to the middle of the pack than they thought. Well, with the hot start they got off to, I think it was just a matter of time before they hit a cold stretch. And never fun to be held to just five points in a quarter. And that game had a lot of Nets fans wondering how the rest of the season would go. But, hey, they got it back together and still finished off pretty well. Now here's Williams. Joe Johnson on the win. With the lead pass. And there's the whistle. Foul hard on the shot. He'll go to the line. It's going to be on Brandon Bass. Well, you know, when Rajon Rondo went down last season and the Celtics looked to be out of any title contention, Kevin Garnett, guys, became a very hot topic on the trade market. And with his ability and experience, that should be no surprise. And the first one drops. You talked about what Garnett can bring to a team. He's still an impactful player. Offensively, a deadly jump shooter. He reached 25,000 points last season with Boston. Also a great passer. But it's defensively where he really makes his mark. One of the best defensive forwards I think the league has ever seen. His ability to communicate, uh, to guard pick and roll, to switch out onto point guards and stay in front of them. And then the intensity, the intangible that he brings to your club. Well, you know, last season, I think, officially brought the immediate championship aspirations of the Celtics to a close. The seventh seed in the East, dispatched in the first round by the Knicks. The rebuild was on in full cycle. Now here's Rondo. Clark, 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 Clark. And stolen by Darren Williams. Here in the first, a little over a minute played so far. He feeds it to Johnson. And that one's good. And back to the Celtics, making the playoffs, sure. But, you know, not like Steve back in 08 or, or 2010. Well, this has been a phenomenal era you know, with KG and Pierce that is now a thing of the past. But, but look, they've hoisted a championship banner very close to another. But it's just time to move on. And, and that's just the way it is in the NBA. These things go in waves. And the Celtics now in rebuilding mode. And out of bounds is Brooklyn Games possession. Doris Burke has an update for us. Doris? I had a chance to talk with the head coach for Brooklyn. He said their main focus will be trying to contain Rajon Rondo. He said, quote, we all know that Rondo's capable of taking over games single-handedly. So, guys, he said they've got to match his energy and try to keep him out of the paint. All right, Doris, thanks. 
Here's Williams. And that one hits back out. Well, I think the defense got lucky right there. I mean, he's going to make a lot more of those than he misses when he's got that much room. Williams against Ronda. Bradley. as he misses he'll go to the line and shoot two you know Avery Bradley missed the first three months of last season after undergoing surgery on both shoulders fellas I mean when Rondo went down with his ACL tear Bradley stepped into the starting point guard role and I thought performed very well that free throw good from Bradley and for Bradley a tremendous defender and Steve able to defend either the one or the two well, he's listed at 6'2", but he has incredibly long arms and quick feet. So he's strong enough to guard bigger players, but his best attribute is putting pressure on the ball. It's a nightmare just trying to bring the ball up the floor against Bradley. One of the best on-ball defenders, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And up and down season for the Nets last year, and the playoffs were just more of the same. They ended up getting knocked out by the Bulls in the only first-round matchup that went to seven games. Williams gets a screen from Garnett. Back to Johnson. Fires the jump from the corner and nails us. First quarter of basketball, just over two and a half minutes play. Now here's Rondo. Kevin Garnett with the steal. And now here's Johnson, the fast break chance. And it's Darren Williams with the finish. Beautiful work in the transition game. That's how to do it. Attack early before the defense can get itself set. Celtics trail by three. Well, back to the Nets in the playoffs. They lost a game at Barclays early and looked to be on the ropes down 3 1 after four games, but they did well just to steal one in Chicago and force a game seven. What a strange series that was. The Bulls made that miracle comeback behind Nate Robinson and one game and then ended up going on the road to Brooklyn and winning game seven. What a disappointment for the Nets in their debut season in Brooklyn. Here's Williams after Jeff Green's bucket. Johnson kicks to Williams. Back to Johnson. Five to shoot. Pull from the top of the key. And the rebound goes to Rajon Rondo. Well, head coach Jason Kidd, that's a phrase I didn't expect to hear this quickly, but uh, Kidd wasted no time. Only a matter of weeks after he announced his retirement as a player, he was named the head coach of the Brooklyn Nets. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see the transition. Kidd, obviously, great basketball IQ, so well respected as a person in the league. I think it's just a matter of time before he really finds his footing and becomes an excellent coach. Now here's Pierce. Jeff Green missing his last shot. Here's Lopez. Well, it didn't take long for Brook Lopez to become a factor in the middle. As soon as he came into this league, he was scoring and rebounding at a pretty good rate. And, you know, you watch him, he's not overwhelming, uh, but he's got a nice set of low post moves, and he's athletic enough to get those shots off from either block. Something else with Brooks, Steve, is he's such a consistent player that it's very hard for him to have a false game. His game doesn't fluctuate a whole lot. He's pretty steady. He'll find a way to score either from the line with his excellent free throw shooting or with his back to the basket. Outside Brent. 
Lee outside. Three-pointer. That one goes. Lee's got himself on the board with three there. D there, guys, was pretty much non-existent. I mean, you can't leave a good shooter like that open. Here's Terry. He's had some playing time, but no scoring yet from him. A shot by Kirilenko. And again, no good by Brooklyn. Celtics leading by four. And it's Bradley off the drive. Dishes it to lead. Back to Bradley. Tries to save it. And out of bounds as the Nets gain possession. Just four seconds left to play in the first quarter. Johnson. And released it in time, but it's off the mark. And so the first quarter is in the books. It's the Celtics up by four. And we'll return shortly. Second quarter just getting set to start. What do you guys think about the Celtics here in this one? And the difference to this point has been defense. You know, this club has really gotten after it, and that's what's gotten them this lead. Well, there's nothing that's gone up that hasn't been contested so far. Nets trail by four. You know, one part of Joe Johnson's game that tends to get overlooked, guys, is his ability to create space with the dribble. He's got great size, and that ability makes him the potent scorer he is. Now let's go to Doris Burke, Doris. Gentlemen, for Jared Solinger, drafted to the Celtics last season, it was a great opportunity to learn from one of the best big men ever to play the game in Kevin Garnett. Solinger said, you're learning every day, and as you're seeing what he's seeing, the game slows down tremendously. Fortunately, Jared not the type to take criticism personally, saying, quote, because I had Zach Sillinger as a coach, he says, referring to his father, James, who taught him the game. And guys, Garnett praised Sillinger's incredible IQ in the game and no-nonsense demeanor. He's fit right in with the Celtics. Nice stuff, Doris. Thank you. And for Joe Johnson, as you mentioned, Clark, great size and... He's comfortable, truly, in Steve, from shooting anywhere on the floor. Yeah, and whether it's a spot up or off the dribble, he can go either direction. He's so strong, excellent ball handling ability. Oh, but I think he could do a little more damage inside if he chose to. He's got the body to be a good post-up player. And he makes the first. You know, you think of what a typical Eastern Conference team plays like, and you often think of the Celtics. I mean, they like to slow it up. They'll play hard D and take their fouls when they can. Uh, still, the Celtics last year were just average when it came to playing the rest of the conference. And both free throws good for Lee. Going back to the Celtics, even as you said, Clark, they do all the things most Eastern Conference teams do well. They just couldn't keep it together, Steve, uh, to finish far above 500 in the East. Well, losing Rondo was a huge part of it you know, as they had to adjust their entire offense midway through the season. And I think a lot of it, too, is you know the rest of the East has caught up to them, and time is, is finally catching up to them. Here's Bradley after Joe Johnson's score. And now the first time out home here for Boston. Back and down. Outside Brent. Lee left side. Five on the clock. Back to Bradley. And the shot no good. A bit short. And that's a shot he's got to hit. You don't get too many better looks from that range. Outside for Blotch. On brief there. And foul hard that time. He'll get the line and shoot two. 
I, I would think it's safe to say that Andre blocks grew up as an NBA player last season. His maturity was obvious. He was an impact big when he got minutes, and getting amnesty by Washington might have been the wake-up call that his career needed. That one is off. And to go back, Clark, to Andre Blotch, what a turnaround after being cut loose by the Wizards last season. Arguably the best of his career with Brooklyn. Well, we knew he had talent all along. I thought a big part of it was motivation and a culture of accountability. Some players are self-starters. Other guys need coaches and teammates to push them. But I thought Blatch probably had his best season yet last year. You know, the Nets certainly made a big turnaround last season, guys, going from a team that was in the lottery to a team that finished in the middle of the pack of the playoff race. But you got to wonder if the heavy contracts they have have tied their hands going forward. They get it again. The second chance effort, and that's two points on the board. Humphries has got his first points in this one. It's a great play under the boards for him, and you know that's the standard that he sets. It seems like all those second chance points, I mean, they're there for him, game in, game out. And the first time out called of the game for Brooklyn. Well, going back to your point with the Nets club, they did get a lot better and have a solid core, but they also have a lot of money tied up. And if they improve, it'll have to be through the draft. But most of, I don't see them getting a high pick anytime soon. Well, particularly not after the big trade they made. You know, getting Pierce and Garnett and Jason Terry, they had to give up three picks to Boston in that deal. But this is an organization that has decided to go for it, and they're going to pay a lot of money in salary. Terry against Brandon. Humphreys with the steal. Passes it to Brandon. Kicks it to Humphreys. Feeds it to Wallace. Celtics passing it around. The dish to Humphreys. Courtney Lee is on the wing. Just five on the clock. The baseline J. He's on his way that time. He's got seven points. You know, role players can make big differences in games, and he's showing he can get it done out there. Let's go now to the sideline and catch up with Doris Burke. Hey, Doris. Yes, Kevin. For Jason, he had a Hall of Fame caliber point guard in his 19 years as a player. About a week after retiring, it was announced he would come to the league as head coach of the Brooklyn Nets. He said, quote, I went from being one of the oldest guys in the league to being a rookie all over again. Kevin, he said it makes him feel young again. Nice to have him back. Thanks, Doris. Here's Wallace. After the main shot from Evans, Wallace the pass to Humphreys. There's the feed to Selinger. Wallace outside. Bradley. And blocked. Terry against Wallace. Terry dishes to Johnson. And that one's good. It's now only a one-point Boston lead. And he's shaking off a poor first-quarter shooting effort. He's really starting to turn it on now, guys. Sollinger with a screen for Brent. And the bucket counts. He's on his way to the free throw line. Trying to make it a three-point play. Well, the pick works really well there. Nice job taking it right to the 10 for the layup. The Celtics have been on target from the free throw line. They're 5 of 5 in that department. About a year ago, they converted about 78% of their free throws as a team. So pretty solid there. And you know, a lot of times, guys, in some of their performances last year, their free throw numbers helped them win games. You know, the Celtics ruled the Atlantic starting with their title run in 08, but last year it finally came to an end, that ruling of the Atlantic. Five straight years of winning their division is now behind them. The shot's good from Lopez. Strong rebounding, and he's rewarded with the easy putback. The Celtics have gone 50% from the floor in the second quarter, three of six. Bradley gets the lead. Pass to Humphreys. They kick it out to Green. Wallace outside. Wallace off the pick from Humphreys. And yes, sir, that one comes. And the Celtics lead by three. 
And back to the Celtics in the Atlantic. You knew it was going to be hard for them to keep winning the division with all the talent, Steve, that has come into it within the last couple of years. Well, it was a great five-year run for Boston in terms of winning the Atlantic. But, you know, with the up-and-coming teams in New York and Brooklyn, all of a sudden Boston is, is looking ahead, looking above them to the other teams in the division. And now it's time to, to make another push, another rebuilding job, and get back on top. Boy, they keep hammering away at him inside, forcing that ball into the paint. Smash mouth basketball. <laughs> yeah, and it's a strategy that has served them well in this opening half, Clark. So for the Nets, Olenek, he's checked in for Humphreys. Bass comes in for Gerald Wallace. Rajon Rondo is subbed in for Avery Bell. That one drops. He ties it up. You know, it's been a while since the Nets have been one of the fear teams in the East. They had their best season since their days when they would make trips to the finals in the early 2000s. Really an excellent turnaround effort um, from the entire organization. Cannot hit. The Nets go the other way with it. We've got 28 seconds left in the second quarter. Williams attacking. And that misses. That would have put him up. The Celtics have gone four of eight so far here in the second quarter. Lee passes to Green. Finish off the break. Great unspoken communication between teammates leading to the nice assist and the easy score. Johnson dishes to Williams. Lopez, a screen on run. Here's Garnett. He got up in time, but it wouldn't fall for him. And a tight game here as we end the first half. Celtics lead by two. And coming up now, it's the Sprint Halftime Show with Damon Bruce. We'll return with the start of the third quarter in just a while. And now, brought to you by Sprint. Happy Tuesday to all of you from us at 2K Sports. I'm Damon Bruce. Out in Boston, the Celtics are in a close game against Brooklyn. Offensively, they're making it look ridiculously easy. Everything's falling. An impressive first half for Gerald Wallace. Nobody out there has been able to slow him down. And Brooklyn also having a good first half. You look at the offensive rebounds, they're creating second opportunities, and that's a key to winning. Leading the game in scoring, Joe Johnson. We've come to expect performances like this one from him. That'll be all for this episode. It's in the books. I'm all done reading. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the second half. The Sprint Halftime Report, presented by Sprint. And as we return, a view of the beautiful skyline of downtown Boston. So look at Joe Johnson. He's really been playing well. He went off in the first two quarters, guys, as he's capable of doing. We might see some changes here in the defensive approach they use on him in the second half. Yeah, they've got to make some sort of change. I mean, they can't let him continue to torch him like he has been. Now here's Williams. Johnson outside. Pass to Pierce. Back to Johnson. Johnson, double team. Outside, Williams. For the lead. It's good on the putback. Garnett's got the first points to start out the third quarter for the Nets. Smooth, guys. Very good job there of getting himself in close enough that he could just tip it back in. And, you know, those kind of plays in the offensive glass can tell the story sometimes uh, as much as any single play in the game. Yeah, yeah. they really can't. I mean, they can't allow him to beat them to uh, so many of those offensive rebounds. That'll kill you. Here's Bradley. And the score by Kevin Garnett. In my opinion, Brooke Lopez, guys, quite possibly is the best scoring seven-footer in the game. He has terrific skills on the road block. And he's able to step out and knock that outside shot down from out to the three-point line. The try by Rondo. He dishes it to Bradley. To the inside. Here's a limit. Hits the jump. And the Celtics lead by two. Good job there, Kevin, getting himself a little space on the inside. And for Brooke Lopez last season, Steve, almost 20 points a game, shooting over 50%. His best season ever. You know, I think he's really evolved into one of the top centers in the league. And that's a big time interior threat, man, as you know. That's got to hurt these days. Thank you. 
Third quarter of basketball, about a minute and a half in. Johnson from outside, and that is good. Johnson's got 13 points. Guys, close one here. No team getting a huge advantage. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, there have already been five lead changes, but nobody taking control of it. Great matchup. I mean, these two teams really, really match up well talent-wise. I'm enjoying this. Now a timeout called by Boston. You know, Darren Williams is so strong and so poised in the post. I'd like to see him down on the block a little bit more often. There are very few point guards in this league who really have the strength to deal with Williams in a post-up situation. points for Joe Johnson. He's played an important role in their offense today, guys. Without him, they may not be in the lead. Outside Rondo. He kicks it to Bass. Bass gets the screen from Rondo. Back and down is Green. Right side Green. And misses it off the right side of the rim. Well, you know, it was last season that started the dissolution of the Big Three in Boston. Ray Allen leaving from Miami. That definitely ruffled some feathers with his former teammates, and they tried to replace him by committee at the shooting guard position and really had mixed results. Look we're making some changes. Humphreys comes in for a limit, and it's Wallace in for Brandon Banks. And despite losing Ray Allen, the Celtics shot more three-pointers last season. Well, they added a couple of guys who, who could shoot threes. But remember, this is, over the last five, six years, has not been a high-volume three-point shooting team. It's been Ray Allen and Paul Pierce, and that's about it. So I think with this new crop of talent, I think you'll see Boston casting a lot more threes into the, the next few years. There's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. Great job. Take him right at the defense. I like the aggressiveness. Yeah, he left him no choice but to foul. Him. He's got free throw attempts number four and five here. First one falls here. Brooke Lopez is checked in for Brooklyn. Terry comes in for Joe Johnson. And so Bradley nails both of them. Nets leading by three. Williams kicks to Terry. Outside, Pierce. He passes it to Williams. Good on the triple. Williams has got five. Well, Kevin, probably his greatest value lies in his tremendous three-point shooting. When he's out on the perimeter, it gives them the ability to really stretch the defense out. You know, he's got something more than that, Steve. I don't know of a player who can make defenders look as silly and foolish as he does with his passing. Going behind his back, dropping no look down, straightening the two guys' legs. I mean, all of that stuff is in his book bag of tricks. And here's Bradley. 
after the three-pointer from Jalen Williams. You know, guys, Karolinko took a year off from the NBA in 11-12 to play in his native Russia, and he won the EuroLeague MVP. Also helped Russia bring home the bronze in London, and last season was a key player for Minnesota. Rondo passes to Brandon. It's good coming in the assist by Rajon Rondo. And that's a nine-point for E.V. Brandon. Nats have gone five of six so far from the field in the second half. Tremendous efficiency. Here's with the screen on run. It's Williams with the drive and stolen by Lawrence. The finish. And once he took off, it looked like the defense just had no interest in getting it as well. That's one where you just give up the two points and move on. A minute 20 left to play here in the third. And for Kirilenko last season, as you mentioned, Clark, a big role for the Timberwolves. Now, Steve, if he can just stay healthy. Yeah, all those injuries. He missed 18 games last year. But with his defense and his versatility, he helped keep that team afloat. Six on the shot clock. Williams dishes to Lopez. And he was fouled in the act of shooting. Chance here now for a three-point play. Now, it's hard to imagine them not running away with this game if they can continue to shoot the ball like they have been. Steve, everything is falling for them this half, and they haven't had any empty possessions scoring on every trip. Brandon Basses checked in for Jeff Green. Now let's take a moment to get your guys' take on the scoring so far for the Nets. You know, one of the big scores has been the three ball. It's been a key part of their offense throughout the game. And they're getting the ball inside, which is what I like. Five percent of shots down on the block and in the paint area. Now here's Rondo. He's got five. Rondo off the pitch from Humphreys. And it's Rondo penetrating. Bradley can't get it to go. That's some more rugged play from them inside. They have a decent edge in rebounds thus far. And that hard work on the boards needs to continue. That could be what swings this game eventually. Controls the rebound and puts it back up and in. He never gives up on a missed shot. He feels like everyone is his, and that tip in paid off for him. About seven seconds separating the shot and game blocks. Humphreys kicks to Bradley. Celtics passing it around. Lights on Bradley. And he drops in the layup off the glass. Bradley's got seven points here in this quarter. Well, he's so good at recognizing where the openings are and getting the ball to the rim. And Williams, here we go. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. Yeah, he got whacked. Shouldn't be much debate on that one. Yeah, that was as straightforward as it gets, guys. The Nets have shot 67% from the line, going 6 of 9. And not a very strong free throw shooting team in general, guys. They shot 73% as a team a year ago. And it's something they know that if they improve, can really have a big impact on their success. And the first one at the line is good. The Nets making a switch here. And both free throws good for Williams. That's a familiar sight. He hardly ever wastes his chances at the line. Cash is in right The third quarter comes to a close. Nets out in front, up six. And we'll have the start of the fourth quarter for you as soon as we get back from this short break. as we get rolling once more. The fourth quarter right ahead in what's been a very well-contested game. Celtics trail by six. Rondo with it. He feeds it to Brady. Back to Rondo. Dishes it to Green. Pierce covering. Just five to shoot. And lots yes. of contact there. Missing the shot. He'll shoot two. That's on Paul Pierce. Jeff Green, drafted out of Georgetown by the Celtics back in 2007, actually never played a game for them. Was traded to Seattle in exchange 
for Ray Allen. But in 2011, Boston reacquired him in exchange for Kendrick Perkins. So it's come full circle for the young man, and I think he's starting to find his groove as an NBA player. First free throw is good. And for Jeff Green in Seattle, Van Oklahoma City playing alongside Kevin Durant. Green, Steve ended up at the power forward position, and I thought he was thriving with Boston. Yeah, I like that position for him, actually, because when you put him at the small forward, uh, offensively, he's limited. You put him at, at the four, now he can drive right around his man and use his speed and quickness. But defensively, he can guard pretty much anybody out there size-wise. Green against Johnson. Passes to Williams. Shoots it up. That's in there. Johnson with the assist. Nine points for Darren Williams. There's been a change in his game compared to what we saw in the first half. And he's scoring with a lot of confidence now. Rondo against Williams. Gets the bucket and the foul. That's on Darren Williams. Well, they were sleeping on defense. The defense really didn't do its job. I mean, a little slow to react to the ball getting into the paint. That's costly. Well, and at this stage of such a tight game, I think this is when tired legs start to show. And the defense can become vulnerable in the low block. Chris Humphries has checked in for Brandon Bass. You know, one of the worst things to see is a young, speedy, dynamic point guard go down with a torn ACL. It happened to Derrick Rose in 2012. And last year, Rajon Rondo was the victim. Left side, Pierce. Feeds the low pass. Kicks to Johnson. Guarded by Brad. The 11 footer gives the block. Outside Rondo. Makes the lead pass. And the this is. This game is going to take a big swing. Clark, if the deep continues to clear out like that, give up easy dunk. Yeah, that's the kind of defense we expect to see in a blowout, Kevin, or even a exhibition game, not a close game like this. Look and how you know, frustrated Steve is on that. Well, I just, I, you know what, Kevin? Come on, Kevin. I, I just like that he didn't choose to just lay it up. There. I mean, he threw it down with force. Let's go quickly over to Doris Burke for an update. I was able to listen in on what the next coach is going over with his team. He gave his guys the green light to keep firing from downtown, telling them, listen, I like what you're doing out there. Keep finding those gaps on the perimeter. They're giving us open shots. Here's inside the front of the line. The shot's good on the assist by Johnson. And the Nets lead by three. The Celtics shooting about 59% from a four offensively. They've been running without a hitch. Second minute off the clock now in the fourth. Rondo with the ball. Now Garnett defending. Bradley passes to Rondo. And the layup is good. Rondo's got five points in the quarter. And that's ten straight points in the paint. I mean, defensively, the wind has just been knocked out of their sails. Need to get more bodies committed down low. Williams up on top. He's covered by Rondo. Here's Dishes to Garnett. The feed now to Johnson. Guarded by Brent. And they force the shot clock violation. Great D. You cannot afford to make mistakes like that here in a tight game. Now a timeout called by Boston. All right, you look at the Joe Johnson trade for the Nets. They picked up his max contract from the Hawks, committing $80 million over four years. But, you know, last season, his lowest point in the output in over a decade. A down season overall. But, hey, there's a lot of talent on this team. He's not expected to score as much anymore. A little over two and a half minutes have passed here in the fourth quarter. Outside Rondo, Hans Bradley on the way. And the go-ahead bucket, no good. And for the Nets, they started the season doing some of that uh, isolation offensively for Joe Johnson that we saw in Atlanta Park. And even with the most efficient individual scores, that's not usually the way to go offensively over the long haul with Joe going through a bit of a lull in terms of his shooting percentages. 
I thought they might have been better served to anchor the offense around Brook Lopez inside. Well, his shot's been off today. No question. He's not the guy they're going to want to look to if they want to keep this lead where it is. Green. Oh. A rebound by Garnett. Garnett's got four rebounds now tonight. The kick out to Williams. Double team on Williams. The dish to Lopez. 13 feet away. And Garnett with the basket on the assist from Lopez. Six points for Kevin Garnett. You're going to be waiting a long time if you're waiting for him to miss that when he's that open. Rondo kicks to Bradley. Green with a screen for Rondo. Bradley. He nails it. Bradley's got ten points in just the second half. This is a fantastic performance in this half. He didn't play as well in the first, but you know, you just know with this guy, He's always ready to turn it around. Now a timeout called by Brooklyn. And I'm going from Bradley. They don't seem to have any answers for him. They need to review their game plan and look for a way to cool them off. Celtics making this switch here. Passes checked in. Outside Pierce. Lopez a screen on Green. Pierce gets the screen from Lopez. And there's the rejection. Orlando. A minute 42 left in the fourth quarter of this one. To take the lead. That's good. And they saw the sweep by two. And that should take guys on the hustle sticks for the Celtics. Their defense has been outstanding, Kevin. Closing out on shots, blocking a lot of them as well. They've been firing on all cylinders in the transition game, too. I mean, they've really run the break well. Here's Pierce. And that one's good. Pierce has got four points in the quarter. It's a fantastic quarter for him here in the fourth. I mean, efficiency personified here. Time called here. The Celtics decide to talk it over. The score is tied at 51. 115 left to play in the final quarter. left in the game. The drive by Rondo. Takes it out to Bradley. Brooklyn with the rebound. And here is Williams. There's 45 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Pocket six. Here's against Brown. And he throws the line. Now they did have a foul to give, but they couldn't get a foul before the shot. And yeah, you really want to try to foul in that situation before he gets into the shooting motion. And it just didn't work out that time.
doesn't hit the first, and that was the one they really wanted. He's got one more, though. so far. Watch outside. Outside Rondo. Here's the two drop. Oh, missed it. It's good. He's tied up this game. Oh, what a shot. You got to put bodies on the glass right there. They just are not getting it done on the boards. Yeah, they've got to do a much better job of going harder than that to the glass. Timeout called the Nets. Fourth quarter. Williams with three. Oh, it's no good. And we're going to overtime. Time expires, and we're going to overtime. We've got more NBA basketball coming your way in just a minute. the pick. Oh, Lennox sets a screen for Ronda. A uh, good one from Bradley. No good off the front iron. Nobody anywhere close to him. Where's the defense? He's got to make that shot there. Watch with the screen on Bradley. Pierce with it. Now guarded by Bradley. Garnett the pass to Johnson. Johnson off the pick from Watch. Johnson dishes to Pierce. And the three ball is good. Pierce has got the first points here in the overtime period for the Nets. So it's trailed by three. Rondo kicks to Bradley. Back to Rondo. Outside Bradley. Pass to Rondo. Shot clock at six. He dishes it to Banks. Hands it from short range. Oh, the bounce pass was the key to the play. Now a timeout goal by Brooklyn. time here just over a minute into oh, overtime up, here's Garnett off the left wing you'd expect him to nail that when he went close to the hoop Rondo passes the break Rondo with it Williams picks him up and so he earns a trip to the line officials saw the contact and he'll shoot too Rondo playing well he's got 10 points and four assists He's having a great passing game and is knocking down those foul shots as well. Yeah, he's been rock solid uh, throughout this game and, and really been a, a, a big factor in this offensive performance for his team. His free throw is good, and that ties the game up.
second free throw. No good that time. He really wanted that one. He should be in front right now, but he'll be relieved not to have come up totally empty there. Williams hits to Johnson. Has to watch. That's him coming off an assist from Johnson. And that shot sucked the life out of the whole building. Now that was a big one, Clark. You can hear it. Yeah, that was a gut punch right there. These fans, oh, man, they're struggling. Rondo gets through. And he's out of the second. Taking the hard to the rack for the big throw. And giving unofficial assist Clark to his teammate for setting a screen that freed him up. Oh, good call. And that was really the key to the play. Outside, Williams. Six on the shot clock. Nails it! We're seeing the red-hot version of Darren Williams right now. It's been a little while since they've been in the league. And Kevin, that's exactly why this is an important possession for them. Rondo gets to Bradley. Back to Rondo. Leads him in there. Yes. Another shot. And the basket is good. The ball goes his way. And he could be looking at a three-point play. He sinks the cut free throw. Great job getting to the bucket and getting to the free throw line. You know, when the game's close, you want your guys attacking just like that. Williams gets to Johnson. Offensive rebound. Now the pass to Garnett. Back to watch. He feels it to Williams. He gets to Johnson. Johnson draws the up. Pierce. Who's back up? Yes! And the foul! Jeff Green gets one How much the defense can do once he gets to the bucket? Thank <laughs> you.